Alright, so um, Lewis formulas, the way you write Lewis formulas would depend on whether or not you have an ionic or covalent compound. So you've got two different kinds of compounds we're talking about at this point. We've got ionic and covalent. Okay? And ionic compounds have particles that have opposite charges. Okay? So these are charged particles. And covalent compounds don't have charged particles there. They are um, atoms that share electrons. Okay. Okay. Uh, the way that we looked at um, ionic compounds is we, uh, we, we, we looked at it as if the metals were giving up electrons to the nonmetals. Okay, we looked at ionic compounds as if metals were giving up electrons to nonmetals. And that may not be exactly what's going on, but that's the way we thought about it at this point in time. Okay? And we started with um, the orbital notations to do that. So let's do let's start an orbital notation for magnesium then. Okay, so this goes back to unit two where we wrote orbital notation. And for magnesium we've got 1s electrons. Okay? So we go back to the periodic table, and remember that helium, when we're doing orbital rotations and electron configurations and things of that nature, helium best belongs right here. Okay? So these are all these two columns are the S sublevel region atoms. So you got an electron here and here in the first row, S sublevel, so that's the 1S electrons. So hydrogen and helium will represent uh, the places that uh, we're going to put these two. Uh, first two electrons, okay? Then in the next, there's no other elements in this first row. In the second row, we've got lithium and beryllium here in this S sublevel region. So we have a second row S, and we need two electrons represented by the elements lithium and beryllium. But in this row, we've also got these atoms over here. This is the, this whole section over here is the P sublevel region. So these are two P. We're still in the second row, so it's two this is the P sublevel region. Now we've got one, two, three orbitals in the P sublevel region. And you have three orbitals because you've got six electrons, and you can put two electrons in each orbital. So we put an electron in for each of these elements, and we do it in this fashion, one, one in each box, and come back and put them in here, in there, uh, pair them up. And these boxes are representing Orbitals. Orbitals don't actually have those shapes. Orbitals have that balloon shape we did. But we're representing that as a way of sort of keeping up with all the electrons. Okay, we're finally down here to, to magnesium. where We have sodium and magnesium in the third row in the S sublevel region. So that's 3S, and we have two electrons, 1, 2. So there's the orbital rotation for magnesium. Okay, if we're going to combine that with uh, let's say fluorine. So fluorine is right here in the second row. So we've got to fill up 1s, 2s, and we need seven electrons in 2p. So here's 1s, 2s, we fill it up, and in 2p we're going to put in seven electrons. We need three orbitals, one, two, three, four, I'm, I'm sorry, seven in the valence level, five in the p-sub level. One, two, three, four, five in the p-sub level. Okay? All right, with ionic compounds then, we're going to move electrons from one element to the other to get uh, the electron arrangement so that both elements have a highest energy level with eight electrons. Okay? All the atoms want to have eight electrons in that valence level except for the really small ones. Okay, like hydrogen, or like helium maybe, I'm sorry, like hydrogen and lithium and beryllium, those only want to have a full first primary level which only has two electrons. Okay, so we can move then one of these electrons right here, okay, and that takes care of getting rid of that electron. If we get rid of this other electron, then we're going to have an S and P level in the second primary level that's full, and we essentially eliminate the third level. So that gives us a highest energy level for magnesium that has eight electrons. It's full. It's more stable that way. 
But to do that, I need another flooring. I know I'm not getting to Lewis formulas yet, but that we're, we're reviewing all this because this is how we figured out the Lewis formula stuff, okay? So here's another lithium and another place to move that electron. Okay? Now, if we were just doing this for orbital rotation, then I need to rewrite all these with the missing electrons, the two plus charge, the added electrons for the fluorines, and the one negative charge on bo both of those. But since what you're asking about is Lewis formulas, I'm going to go straight from this to Lewis formulas, okay? For Lewis formulas, then, for ionic compounds, where we're combining metals and nonmetals at this point in time anyway, Okay, later on we'll be doing polyatomic ions. We talked about that a little bit in this unit so far. We'll be working with ionic compounds. I mean polyatomic ions as well. All right, so when we uh, started out with magnesium, we had uh, in the valence level, 3s, we only had two electrons. So the Lewis dot, or I'm sorry, the electron dot formula for magnesium just has two dots for those two valence electrons. And the fluorine had in the valence level, this valence level is the second primary level. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven electrons. We put one of those on each of the four sides and go back and pair them up as needed until we get to seven. All right. So then this electron can be moved right here. And that will give fluorine eight electrons, right? Another fluorine. But we need that other fluorine for the, to do the same thing in order to get magnesium down to no electrons when we're using electron dots. Okay, so it's a little bit different when you're talking about orbital rotation electron dots. With orbital rotation, we're getting rid of two electrons, but then we can see the full valence level remaining. When we're using this system, we don't see the full valence level remaining. We're just going to get rid of all the dots. So that electron can move there. Okay, and that will give us then magnesium with no dots. And those dots represent electrons. And electrons are negatively charged. Okay, magnesium with all its electrons had an even number of protons and electrons. Protons are positive, electrons are negative. So it was balanced, it was neutral. If we got rid of two electrons, we've got two more protons than we have electrons. So that means the magnesium has a two plus charge. Okay, so we're connect. I'm Reviewing all the stuff we learned in Unit 2 to the new stuff we learned in Unit 3. That's reviewing all that stuff. Chemistry is highly cumulative. You've got to understand Unit 2 to really understand Unit 3, where we are right now. Okay? So fluorines, we added an extra electron on there, which means it has one more electron than protons. Okay? Electrons are negative. Protons are positive. If we've got one more electron than protons, then this fluorine has a negative charge. Okay? But, in order to say, show that a negative charge is over the whole thing and not just like this side of it or something, we typically can put this in a brackets like that to show that it applies to everything. Okay? And we didn't have just one fluorine, we had two. And you can write this symbol twice or you can put a coefficient in front of it to show that we have two of them. Okay, does that make sense? I don't see any heads going up and down our side. Well, I see one, two heads going up and down. All right, good. Three. Do I see here? Four. No? The rest of you don't understand? You've got to give me some feedback, folks. Come on, help me out. Do you understand? Yes. Now I see about six or seven. Do the rest of you understand? Yes. God, wait, come on, guys. All right, so we have magnesium with a 2 plus charge. We have two fluorines that have a 1 negative charge. And we then can put it together into a formula, a, com a molecular formula, or a chem not a molecular formula, but a formula unit, where we've got 1 magnesium and the fluorines, to show they're bonded to that magnesium, we have to use a subscript to. Okay? So that's how we did Lewis dots. This down here is all the Lewis, this part right here is the Lewis dots uh, system for ionic bonds. Okay? What's the matter? Sure. Uh, 
We covered this. If we covered it in unit two, it could be on the test. Ionic or metals, non-metals? Um, ionic means you have cations and anions, which cations are positive, anions are negative. Uh, we, at the very end of unit three, we talked about polyatomic ions. So sometimes the ions are not just metals that have lost electrons and non-metals that gain electrons. Sometimes ions have this covalently bonded group of atoms that have a charge. Okay? But right now, we're just dealing with the metals and non-metals. That's what we dealt with in this unit. Okay?